she's ready to do some sleuthing. <laughs> sleuthing? Welcome back to another video and to another episode of TBR Kaluna! I always say it like that, TBR Kaluna! <laughs> so if you don't know, this is my TBR game that is inspired by Cluedo or if you're American, which picks what I read. If you want to know all about the rules and everything, I'll leave the playlist down below where you can find the first video, which has all the rules. I want you guys to know, I only have, I think, two books from all my previous TBR Cluedo's of the year, which I haven't read yet. So we're almost caught up. I've read a lot of books in April, and I feel like in May we will get 100% caught up. So I'm no longer going to be behind. I'm no longer going to have to feel bad about not taking punishments, because like my soul can't take it. <laughs> So May, I've got some really exciting videos planned. So I want to try and fit in as many books for those videos as I can. I do need to read a lot of mysteries this month. It just so happens that the videos I've got coming, a lot of them are going to be books with mysteries in them. So we want to get into the mystery room as much as we possibly can. Does that sound like something you want? Yes. Well, let me tell you, you'll never get it. So yeah, let's just get into roll one and see what it brings. Okay, time for roll one. Person number eight, which is blue over here in contemporary. Oh, okay. Let's see how many we roll. Oh, we've got a six and a five. Okay, that's good. Um, I don't think I've got any contemporaries I really want to read this month. Maybe, but maybe let's try and pick one. Let's go maybe one, two, three, four, five, which is number 13, which is a TBR veteran. All right, so. <laughs> oh no, this has now gone downhill. Roll One was a contemporary book that was a TBR veteran. And when I saw this, I was like, oh, Oh God, because <laughs> I obviously didn't have anything even remotely that could fit this on my like books I already wanted to read and get to this month. What is going on? Excuse me. So what I decided to do was this is going to be at the round that my patrons vote on. If you don't know, they vote on one round of TV Book Leader every month and that picks what our book club book is. The link is always down below if you want to come join us. If you join the Team Rora tier, you get some of the little TBR Cluedo books that have the numbers on them. You get some of them and one with like a cat portrait on. Just want to let you know. Just want to like remind you in case you didn't know. They had to vote on a contemporary that was a TBR veteran. And the options I gave them, by the way, <laughs> this coming up as a prompt made me realize how many contemporaries I have on my TBR that I put off. I don't think I'm actually very good at reading contemporaries in a quick amount of time. So the options I gave them were My Dark Vanessa, can't believe I have not read this yet, it's actually shameful, um, Shine by Jessica Young, The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel, and What Mama Left Me by Renee Watson. Now I pretty much knew when I posted the vote it was going to be very tight between these two, but I thought this would win, but The Glass Hotel won. So that's going to be our book club pick for May. I I actually was really surprised. Maybe it's because more people have already read this. I feel like a lot of people have already read this. So maybe more people wanted to get to this. I actually have always tried to learn the plot of this and I never have any idea. <laughs> I think it's quite a confusing plot. It's about like this glass hotel and there's a lot of different interweaving stories and we're looking at the lives of lots of different characters. There's a bartender, a financier, um, a shipping executive and like the bartender goes missing on the deck of a ship and there's a glass hotel. It's very confusing, but um, I've never actually read any, any Emily, <laughs> I've never read any Emily St. John Mandel before. I've always wanted to. And obviously a lot of people would probably say like start with Station Eleven, but this is the one that I own and I'm excited to read it. And hopefully we'll have a lot to discuss in the book club. Time for roll two. Person number five, which is white. Let's see how many we roll. A four and a one. Okay, let's just go one, two, three, four, and get the wand, which is a book I need to read for a reading vlog. So round two was a book that I need to read for a reading vlog. I got the wand. Now the special items are not constrained by the genre, what room they're in. They can be any genre. So I, I got a mystery and didn't I? I have a lot of mysteries to read. We're gonna be reading Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. So a lot of you'll know I've been reading the Poirot books in order and this is not the next one <laughs> to read in order, but I do need to read this for a vlog. And this is probably one of the Agatha Christie books I've been most excited to read. I'm actually quite nervous 
to get to this because I think it probably is quite most similar out of all of her books to Murder on the Orient Express which was the first Agatha Christie I ever read and is still probably my favourite. I'm gonna reread it hopefully sometime this year and so I've been really excited to get to this, really excited because the movies come out so I want to watch that. My favourite kind of mysteries are always like trapped close circle isolated murder mysteries where like all of our characters are trapped in that place and we know it's one of them who did it and it's about figuring that out. So we're so excited to be here, yeah, seriously, we're like, this is the dream. So I'm really, really excited. What does the what does the quote on the back say? If you open your heart to evil, evil will come. It will enter in and make its home within you. Interesting. I absolutely love this edition as well. HarperCollins do some of these special editions. There's my Mud on the Orient Express one. And I absolutely love them. I'm gonna like buy every single one that they do in these special editions. So I think they're just so gorgeous. And yeah, a bit nervous because it's not, I wasn't expecting to read this for quite a long time, but we're gonna get to it and we're gonna see how much I like it. <laughs> okay, we're not doing very well on the mysteries so far. <laughs> uh, let's see what's next. Okay, person number one, which is green. Let's see how many we roll. Oh, we've got one and two. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, okay, so it's one of the two closest. Let's just go one, two, three, which is number seven, which is something with red on the cover. Next is a fantasy with red on the cover, and I have chosen The Rook by Daniel O'Malley. Which app would you like to use? Excuse me. So this is like a fantasy mystery, which I had never heard of, and I've got to read for a video. On the back, it says, a woman awakens in a London park, dripping wet and surrounded by corpses wearing latex gloves. In her pocket is a letter from her previous self, Rook Thomas, a superpowered operative in Britain's most secret of secret agencies. And then someone tries to kill her again. Oh, it sounds very interesting. I've spoken a lot, I love, fantastical mysteries. They're really like a favourite kind of sub-genre of mine. I think they're really difficult to do because once you introduce magic into the equation, the whole point of a fair play murder mystery or mystery is that like you're given all the information to figure it out and so you never want the fantasy, the magic to kind of give like an easy way out, like an easy solution or like an unexpected solution. So your kind of magic system has to be quite constrained, which I think makes for really, really interesting books. So I'm super excited to dive into this. It looks very intriguing and I can't believe I've never heard of it before. I'm like, where have I been? So yeah, we're gonna be reading this this month. Roll number four, still no mystery. I'm getting a bit nervous. We want like one of these three people up here. Person number two, who is that? Oh my God, it's purple, thank God. Oh no, I moved it. Person number two. Let's see how many we roll. We have a two and a two. Let's just go one, two, which is number 14, which is, oh my God, a book with all the letters of your name in the title. Oh my God, I don't have any of the mysteries on my teeth, on like the TBI I wanna read this month, have that. How come I finally got mystery and then it was mean to me? <laughs> right, roll four, we finally got into the mystery room, right? And I was fucking buzzing, I was like, ah! Like I've done it, I've done it. And then I got the prompt, a mystery with all the letters of my first name, Megan, in the title. And I was like, well, bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I thought we were fucked. I just like, I don't even know if I have anything on my like whole owned 200 book TBR that could fulfill that. I always get really nervous when this prompt comes up, but we turned out to be very lucky in a book that I was debating reading this month, debating whether I'd get around to and now I guess that my fate has been sealed. It does have all the letters of my first name in the title and that is the Wintringham Mystery. So this is like a golden age of crime mystery. I really love these editions. They're by, who are they by? Collins Crime Club. I might get a few more. I think this style is super cool. All I know about this is kind of the con context behind it, which I don't really want to talk about because it will kind of give away some of my plans to do with it. But this was like originally a 30 part um, like newspaper episodic. So back in the day, a lot of times different authors like Agatha Christie did this a lot would like publish stories in kind of short stories in newspapers or kind of chapters in newspapers. And I didn't like the big four, which is Agatha Christie's one of them that was like readapted from uh, newspaper stories that she'd done. But this was a pretty like popular and like 
a story everyone was talking about when it came out. I know that someone disappears and then there's a mysterious death and we're kind of at this decaying manor house. All the kind of vibes that I really, really like. So I'm very, very excited to get to this. It's blurred by Agatha Christie, Queen. And yeah, I'm excited to read more like golden age of crime um, mysteries because I just kind of read Agatha Christie from that period and I would like to you know, branch into other popular authors from that time as well. Roll number five, person number two, which is purple again, oh my God, yes! <laughs> Let's see how many we roll. Oh, we got a six, oh my God, I moved it. We had a six and a three. Okay, where should we go? Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six which is number 19, which is a book I have hauled recently. Then we had another mystery! And this time it was one that I have hauled recently. And this one I've hauled so recently I haven't even shown you that I hauled it yet. And it is The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. So, hang on, let me get her down. I did not expect this to be the first Simone St. James I ever read. It's one of her older books. I thought the first one I would start with was either The Sundown Motel, which I don't own, but probably The Book of Cold Cases, which is one of my most anticipated releases of this year. But we're not reading that. We're reading The Broken Girls. I'm a little bit concerned. We're following a journalist whose sister was murdered 20 years ago, and then the school in this town is being renovated and another body is found during the renovations. Simone St. James, I've always heard, is a very, very unique and interesting mystery author because her books always have a little element of like the paranormal or the unusual or like, you know, a strange element, a strange kind of speculative element to them, which I don't think I've read enough mysteries like that. I tend to read fantastical, like straight up fantastical different world or like fantastical world mysteries or like your straight up normal mysteries, you know? And this one I feel like isn't necessarily fantastical that I've heard of Simone St. James, but more like speculative, a little element that is unusual. Um, and so I'm really, really excited. Simone St. James is probably one of the authors I've never read before that I most want to read like all of her backlist. So I'm very excited to get to this this month and hopefully I will get to the Book of Cold Cases sometime soon. Okay, our last roll. Person number one, which is green again. And we're a six and a five. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go. I'd quite like to read some romance, actually. So let's see where we can go. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's perfect. That is number two, which is a series I'm part way through. Okay, I can work with that. Then our final round, roll six, was a romance, and it was perfect, actually, the prompt. It was a series I'm partway through, which was I was hoping something would fit this book, and it's Stuck With You by Ali Hazelwood. So this is like a series of novellas that Ali Hazelwood has published. There's three in total. This is the second one. I just finished the first one, and because I'm trying to get through series and not, you know, have loads that I'm reading this year, I want to kind of finish this as soon as I can. I might even read the third one this month if I can get to it, which is Below Zero. I think we're following, like, like, there's like a friendship group of three girls and we're following a different one in each book. This one I think we're following kind of like the sarcastic friend, like the kind of like take no shit friend, <laughs> which I'm really excited. I gave the spoiler alert for my wrap up because I didn't vlog it, but I gave, um, what is it? Under One Roof, the first one, 4.5. It was quite good, especially at the end, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Being a bit saucy. Ali Hazelwood just kind of gets what I want from romances. She gets the kind of dynamics that I want. She gets like the romantic scenes that I want. I just really, really love her. She's by far my favorite romance author I've ever read. I mean, like the only romance book I've ever given five stars to is A Love Hypothesis. So I'm really, really excited to get to this one as well. They're really fun, really short audiobooks to listen to. And yeah, it will just be a fun kind of palette cleanser to read at some point in the month. So there we have it, everyone. That is my May TBR. Hang on, let me grab the books. So we've got these five plus uh, Stuck With You. I'm feeling pretty good about my TBR this month. I've got a, oh my God. Nope, absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> I've obviously got a few other books I would like to read, but I'm really excited for all of these. They're all kind of like five star predictions, like books I'm very, very excited for. So please let me know what you thought of any of these if you have read them. Um, if you've gotten to the end, comment down below. Is there a boat emoji? I'm assuming there's a boat emoji. 
comment that down below if you've gotten to the end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. I love you so much. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.